Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for today. We are grateful to Him for a good worship, good praise. And I am grateful that you are here. Amen. We are going to hear the word of God. But I want us to do this exercise before the word of God comes. Very important. Sometimes God gives us direction. Amen. Because you don't know the intervention that God wants to bring that He wants to use you and I. And he, we are going to pray for for like five, ten minutes, we are going to pray for pregnant women. All pregnant women, we are going to pray for them. And so we want to be on your feet with me. The bombire is a man appealed for, appeal for the bombire. The devil is a liar. And it is with deceit and lies that he is able to get us. And throw in now he made any bone some. Now or then throw in now that and on the GA should have a free and some. Nasa or buy him one in shrub and a pansoba. Amen. Eighty bones are to be the Nada. The guys of Bia. But here that was in the area of Badinu. Or Pepper Bema. Or Pepper Bema. And no one come up. Stana, the worker, I know. Your part is your back. Your part is your back. Your part is your back. Scan, who is scan? No, catch what we say. All your scans are nice. Amen. All your scans in a crowd, they are lies. And now, or fly or nearly the crowd, which we don't go here, you know, let you be a man. Amen. 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 Why am I saying this? I'm saying this thing because I feel strongly that the devil is going to send some deceit and deception into the homes of pregnant women in this church. To let them know that there's something wrong with the pregnancy they are carrying. There's something wrong with the baby in the womb. But we want to reject it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to reject it. Amen. We are praying for all pregnant women in Genesis chapter 25. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Because she was barren. And the Lord entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, became pregnant. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Verse 23, where my, my, my interest is. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in your womb. Two nations are in your womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from your bow. Two nations are in your womb. The Lord told Rebecca, when you make a chair, Rebecca said, Am I near you and what we you? It means that when our women are pregnant, they are carrying all nations. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our children are nations. And the children in the womb, they are nations. We want to pray that God will preserve our nations. We want to pray that God be us around our nation's law. The nation in the womb of God, you will present in the name of Jesus. We want to pray for all pregnant women in this house, all pregnant women in ultimate Christian ministry, all pregnant women in your family. We want to lift them before God. And our people that will see and our people that will ultimate Christian ministry, and our people that will pursue God.
give up on your children who want to pray that God will grant strength yes, Lord. to all our pregnant women in the name of Jesus, Jesus. 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 Christ. God will give strength. I don't know why we are praying on this, but don't talk with this prayer. I don't know why God will give us. I don't know.
and invite to the podium the man of God, the man of God, the pastor, Paul, to keep my hand there. Hallelujah.
We will read First Peter chapter five, verse ten. So I think that we can open First Peter five, verse ten, and then shall tell you open Numbers twenty three, verse nineteen. We will take these two and then we will move on to the next two. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything I am telling you here is not from my mind. In fact, I have nothing to give you. Praise God. The word of God is the basis for which we preach. Hallelujah. So it is important that when we come to the house of God, we hear the word of God. Amen. There is no need for me to be here without giving you the word of God. And reading the scriptures is very important. Sometimes you want to hear what the preacher man will say, the kind of uh, illustrations and everything the preacher man will give. But if you listen to the scripture, there is a revelation you can receive. Hallelujah. So you are all opening to these scriptures. And as the reader, you also ponder upon the words. And I believe the spirit of God will reveal something good unto you. Amen. First Peter chapter 5 from the verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory, who has called us unto his eternal glory, make you perfect, make you perfect, established, established, strengthened, strengthened, settle you. you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the God of all grace, <laughs> the God of all grace. The God of all grace. Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Bible says, we have been saved by grace. Your salvation is by grace. So therefore, everything you will need in this life will come by grace. And Bible is saying that Hallelujah. Amen. So you are at the right place. Because whatever you want to achieve on this earth, the marital blessings you want to receive, the academic blessings you want to receive, that prosperity you are looking for, that healing you are seeking for, all comes by grace. And there is a career of that grace. It is God. Hallelujah. And you and I are serving this God. In fact, the restoration we are looking for comes by grace. That's why we have it here. A common grace for complete restoration. So, the thing you are looking for comes by grace. And the God you are serving is the carrier of all the grace. So, as you are seated in this morning, it means that your God has answered your prayers. Hallelujah. Put your hands together unto the Lord. And he said, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, suffering is part of the progress. Hallelujah. Amen. Child of God, you have to go through the mill. In fact, if you don't go through the mill, you cannot enjoy your success. No. Anybody who has been freely given something does not know how to use it because he did not suffer from it. Hallelujah. In fact, if you see somebody enjoying bamboo and okra stew, it did not just come like that. There was a suffering in stirring the bamboo, especially those who put the bamboo on the on the mukia, where you have to put the fire together, the smoke and everything has to enter your eye. Finding the, 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 the fire, the smoke enter your eye. Stirring bamboo alone is not easy. Those of us who will be using the, 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 the gas, you put the bamboo on top, you cannot climb on the gas, so it's on top like that. And then you try, uh, then you put it down. It is suffering. Cutting the bottle, some of my ladies even cut their fingers. But after it all, you sit down and enjoy the bamboo. Forgetting all the sufferings. Huh? So God is telling you, after you have suffered a while, you will restore you. So what you are going through is part of the process. Hallelujah. It is part of the process. So look, the process or the suffering you are going through means
means that you are on the path to your restoration. Hallelujah. So after you have suffered a while, God says, He Himself. The enemy says that after you have suffered a little while, will Himself restore you. God Himself will restore you. It's not going to depend on any man, it's not going to depend on any woman, it's not going to depend on your boss to restore you. He Himself will restore you. Hallelujah. He Himself. So the one that you are looking up to, who is bluffing you? The one that you are looking up to, who, 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 who you go to and, 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 and they, they, they seem to turn you down. Look, look up unto God. He said, He Himself will restore you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read the next scripture. Numbers 23, the verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man. God is not a man. That he should lie. That he should lie. He, not a son of he is not a son of man. That he should repent. That he would change his mind. Had he said. Had he said. And shall he not prove it? Or had he spoken? Has he spoken? And shall he not make it? And shall he not make it to happen? Look, I have given you all the scriptures to assume that what God has said about you, he will do it. Yes. Hallelujah. He is not a man. Men are limited by space. Men are limited by distance. Men are limited by time. But the God who said time cannot limit him. He existed before time. That's why it's everlasting. Hallelujah. I want to build your faith. For you to understand that the men are also of a sower they will obey him. He is not a man. He doesn't lie. God does not change his mind when he says that I'm blessed. Look, every promise of God that he has given unto his children, if you fulfill what you need to fulfill, you receive the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he doesn't change his mind concerning his promises. His promise to the righteous, God never changes his mind. Or some now dream that I want to bless us and I said, Inshallah. Or the actual man that trained you for a man in battle, he doesn't change his mind concerning it. Once you meet the standard, he will give it to you. He is under every obligation to bless you once you meet the standard. Praise God. So God is not a man that is lie. Hallelujah. Give God a clap offering. Let's go to the next scripture. Isaiah 55. Now the idea Isaiah 55 10 to 11. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. So Chatel, you go to 1 Thessalonians 5:24. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. For as the rain cometh down. God is saying, as I send the rains down. Continue. And the snow from heaven. And the snow from heaven. Say the summer you saw any snow free heaven ever as And returneth not tita. Me swan or ever put a yeah beat. It's the almost a very slow But what the end? But they tell the sons of our blood, not our day assassin from from. And make it it bring forth in God. Continue. That is may give seed to the soul. Say the baby.
they went and began to perform. They began, they began performing. They began performing. They began putting things together. I said, that is how my word is. As I have spoken, so shall it be. They will go out and work in your favor. Hallelujah. That is the word of God. First Thessalonians 5.24 Faithful is he that calleth you. Faithful is he that calleth you. Faithful is our God who has called you. Faithful is our God who has said that he will bless you. Faithful is our God. Who also will do it. Who also will do it. He is faithful. He has called you and he will do it. He will do it. He is faithful. He will do it. Look, he will connect you like he's connecting brother Noel. Our God is a faithful God. He's a faithful God. Look, the, the, you cannot, you can the, there is nothing. Uh, uh, what, what is beyond faithfulness? Can you, what is beyond faithfulness? You can't get, you see, he's, he's more than faithful. Our God is more than faithful. Whatever he says, he will do it. He will do it. He's reliable. It's a reliable God. Our God. Look, that is why you can go to bed and sleep. When you close your eyes, you know what is you don't know what is going on. But because you know who you have entrusted your life into, you are able to sleep. So the word of God says that I went to bed and I slept. Because God sustained me. He's dependable. He's reliable. He's a faithful God. Who has called you and he will do it. Look, it may seem as if it is not happening. It may seem as if things are, are going bad. Things are moving out of your way. But he's putting all things together. He's putting all things together. Hallelujah. Look, I am giving you all these scriptures for you to know that your restoration is assured. Praise God. God has done his part. Now the rest is for you and I. And that is the more reason I am here this morning. Hallelujah. The preparedness we need to be ready for the journey ahead of us. Because we are embarking on a journey. You are too quiet. I will call you so I will try the restoration. Hallelujah. Restoration is a destination. Amen. And every destination involves or requires that you embark on a journey. Every time self restoration, hey, I'm going to sweep you. And you are here in town. You can't just get up and get to I'm going to sweep you. You must be prepared and take the chain to I'm going to sweep you. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why I am here this morning. That God will equip us, teach us, alter our steps, and take us through that chain so that we will get to our destination called restoration. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God praise in this place. And my inspiration is coming from a book our bishop wrote, or a book our bishop has, Steps to Blessed Change. Hallelujah. That is where I picked my restoration from. In fact, I left my copy, forgive me. That is where I, I picked my inspiration from. And a character study, or a case study, for this journey we are embarking on is a man called Blind Patinos. Hallelujah. Blind Patinos. And we are going to study Blind Patinos' journey to the land of restoration. Amen. So we want to read the book of Mark, chapter 10, from the verse 46 to 52. I will read that one and then we you help me with the rest. Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52. I read. And they came to Jericho 
This is talking about Jesus Christ and his disciples. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway, sat begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many people charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rich, he called it thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith. Go thy way, thy faith. Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Hallelujah. Give God a clap of him. Hallelujah. So we are introduced to a man called Bartimaeus. In verse 46, we are introduced to a man called Bartimaeus. And we are told that his father is called Timaeus. Hallelujah. But this man was blind. This man was in a sort of captivity. And lastly, we understood that captivity brings limitations on us. So this man was limited by the roadside begging. He couldn't go beyond the roadside. Anytime, any day he was seated at the roadside, he was limited. While people were going up and making ends meet, this man was just limited at the roadside. And he was begging. Limitation. And he also said that of our real identity or of our honor. And this man by scriptures, we are told that he is a son of Timaeus. A lot or little was said about his father. But from, for them to, to, to describe him in that manner, then it means that the father probably was, was a famous man or was somehow rich or something or has some dignity. Hallelujah. But here is this man denied of his identity. And he was begging. So this man needed to get to the land of restoration. He needed restoration badly. Now when he said, or something, maybe I or one or son or bad son will persuade, they said, or something. Hallelujah. So he embarked on the journey. And how he embarked on the journey is what we are going to study this morning and take a lesson from it. So that we can also embark on our journey to the land of restoration. Hallelujah. Verse 47. Can you read for me? Verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son, thy son of David, have mercy on me. When he heard that it was Jesus, there was a hearing. Hallelujah. There was a hearing. We are living in a global world. In fact, they call it a global village. Because what happens in America, it takes just a second for us to, you know, get the information here. Hallelujah. So, we have a lot of information surrounding us. In fact, just a click of a button, you can get access to information across the globe. Hallelujah. So, give me where Black Bartimaeus was sitting, the roadside, and you can imagine 
and sit at the roadside at the Malam Junction. You can imagine the kind of people who pass around, the cars and all that, the information that is going around. Hallelujah. So we are exposed to a lot of information. And information is very critical when it comes to decision making. All of us seated here, we do one thing or the other based on what we have heard. People marry because of an information they have heard. People decide to invest somewhere because of an information they have heard. Hallelujah. So information is very important. That information you hear informs you and forms you. Hallelujah. What we hear or what informs you, forms you. Because that is what you feed your mind on. And as you feed your mind on them, your thinking pattern now begin to align themselves with it. And it becomes your behavior or becomes an action. Hallelujah. So what informs you, forms you. But we see a man called Brian Patinos. Irrespective of the voices he was hearing, Decided to be chosen and not act on just any other voice. He decided to be chosen to, to, to analyze what he must, you know, act upon. The information he must act upon. Because we are hearing a lot of information. He was hearing a lot of information. But he decided that, look, I will not use just any information. No. And then the PR might say, I'm a man too, and I'm a man too, and I'm a man too, and I'm a man If you are taking some people, that's what I'm going to tell you, Jesus, he decided to act. Hallelujah. There is an information by which you must act upon. So you must be choosy in your information. You must be very choosy. And backing on this journey unto restoration, the most important thing you have to look at is the information you feed your mind on. Hallelujah. Why? Because I believe that this journey begins with your faith. Hallelujah. And what you hear, what you feed your mind on, produces fear of faith in you. Hallelujah. So if you are hearing things that you put fear in you, that means that you cannot embark on the journey of the restoration. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the most important thing we need is faith for this journey to begin. Amen. Amen. So be choosing in the things you are hearing. Brad Bartinius decided to act when he heard that it was Jesus. Because he has heard probably about what Jesus was doing way back before he got to Jericho and even did in Jericho and was going up. He had it. Because his sense of sight was, was not active, his sense of hearing was very active. It was sharp. But then he decided that look, I must be choosing on the informations I act on. Most of us here have lost things because we decided to act on something we had. Somebody told you something, no, you, 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 you acted, you reacted. You hear something somewhere, you reacted. You must be juicy in the things you hear. And then the Bia and I did that soon, a bed, a bed, a And then the Bia did a bed, a bed. Quite recently, I was one of my cousins. I was watching his status and there was a gentleman who was proposing to, I, I believe most of us probably have seen it, was proposing to a lady at the market. Or they bring the share about it. It was, no, 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 the market. And my, my cousin said that, hey, I like what to do, that market. And I, 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 I tested as, ah, but what to go to actual mountains, doing everything to get for them to be married, they are not getting it. Because someone proposed to you, but at the market, you said you will not receive, you will not accept the proposal. 
And I told them, it is because of the things you have been watching. The telly novellas you have been watching. They are supposed to impact you positively. Hallelujah. So she what probably a say where somebody proposed to a lady in a plane. So person she proposed money in a plane. Hallelujah. So after eight or your proposal or plane, no idea. What again? What's this? I mean, what's this? Amen. And many of us are losing our blessings because of these things. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must be choosing the things we hear and the things we see. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus decided to be choosy. He did not just settle for any information, but he settled for the information that will build his faith. Because he realized that what he need to order in order to get to the land of restoration is faith. Hallelujah. And Bible says, so that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hear, but hear well. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. You take your phone and, and information will pop up. So you can't control it. But hear well. Be choosy. Decide on what to act on. Decide on what not to act on. Praise the Lord. So embarking on our journey onto restoration, the first thing we need is to be choosy in the things we hear. Because what we hear will either produce faith in you that is an important starter for the journey, or put fear in you that will stop you from receiving your blessing of restoration. Hallelujah. Amen. The verse 47 again. And, he, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. And he said, began to cry out and say, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, thou son of David have, mercy on me. have mercy on me. Your faith must lead you to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Your faith must lead you into prayer. He cried out, in other words, means he prayed. When he heard about Jesus, he did not sit down. He acted upon it because it boosted his faith up and then he prayed. Bible says, faith without works is dead. So after you have fed your mind on the things of God and your faith has been boosted up, that look, I can get to my level of restoration. Don't sit aloof. You must pray. Hallelujah. Because your faith is a weapon through which when, when it is exercised through, through prayer, cleanse the mountains, fills the valleys, make the rock rose smoother for you to get to your destination. Hallelujah. Amen. So what other thing of blood particular did was to pray. Pray. He prayed until something happened. He prayed until he saw a performance. Amen. Amen. Prayer. And the spirit is dead without, you know, and the body is dead without the spirit. So our, our, our faith without words is also dead. So after you have fed your mind, after you have fed your spirit on the taste of God, after you have had an information that has boosted your faith, it is next up unto you to say God in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want us to read a scripture for us to know why it is important that we pray. Look, this atmosphere is saturated with the grace for restoration. But it will not just happen. Hallelujah. It took prayer for prayer that's not to see. 
see his portion. So in this atmosphere, there is grace for restoration. But it will not just happen. You must pray into it. You must pray into it. You must fight your way into it. Hallelujah. Let's read this scripture. First Kings 18. 41 to 44. Chapter 18, verse 44. 41 to 44. I read. And Elijah said unto Ahab. And Elijah said unto Ahab. Get thee up. Get thee up. Sorry. Eat and drink. Eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Hold on. There has been famine, no rainfall. And now Elijah came to Ahab and told him, Oh, he didn't get up, go, eat, drink, for I hear a sound of abundance of rain. There is a sound of abundance of grace for restoration. There is a sound of abundance of grace for restoration. But when Elijah said that, what did he do? He told the king, go and eat, go and drink. But what did Elijah do? Please continue. So they have went out to eat and to drink. They have went. You want to eat and to drink. And Elijah went to the top of Carmel. But Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down. And he cast himself down. Hold on. Elijah declared there is a yet a sound of abundance of rain. But when he said that he don't go to sleep, he didn't go to eat copper. He didn't go to join his friends to play football. He went to the mountain top. He went to his closest. The same way you have been told there is a sound of abundance of grace of restoration in this place. What you have to do is go to the mountain top. Go to the mountain top. Go to the field. Enter into your closet. Lock yourself up. Contend with your God. There is a sound of abundance of rain. Elijah did not go to his house to rest. Hallelujah. He went to Mount Carmel. Continue. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, He said to his servant, Go up now. Go up. Look toward the sea. Look toward the sea. And he went up. And he went there. And he, and looked. he looked. And said, And said, There is nothing. There is nothing. Hold on. But Elijah, you said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Now you have sent your servant to go and look, but there is nothing. That shows that it's coming to, no, the rain is coming to fall. There is nothing. Why? Whatever you are looking for is in the realms of the spirit. And it is your prayer that will pull it down to the physical. Hallelujah. It is already established. It is already fulfilled. But a will pipe up. When we pray, and you will pipe up. And a bema number. So he let that pray once. Said there is nothing. He prayed against the Lord and said, There was nothing. He prayed against the Lord and said, There was nothing. He prayed and prayed and prayed until the seventh time. He said, Go and check. He said, I see a cloud as a fish of man. Your prayer will bring your breakthrough. It is your prayer. It is your prayer. Look, whatever you are looking for, Jesus said, It is finished. It has been accomplished. They are in the realms of the spirit. Thanks be to God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. It is our prayer to pull it down. When by the between my body, Elijah declared, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. There's going to be restoration. But it will not just happen. It is your prayer that will pull it down. 
rise up on your feet and contend. That restoration you are looking for, it is not complete the rest of the spirit. But rise up. Wake up. Enter the process. Wake up. Spend the time on the field. 20 minutes. 30 minutes. One hour. Two hours. Contend. Hallelujah. Because I know one time Daniel prayed the prayer. He prayed for an answer. The answer was released. Or there was contention. Hallelujah. Who knows? Probably there is a contention. Who knows? Probably there is a contention. You must rise up and put your answers down. Because they belong to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Give God a clap of hand. <laughs> so Black Bartimaeus did not just sit aloof. His faith led him to pray. Hallelujah. So he cried out. Amen. The verse 47 ended. No, no. Um, Mark, Mark 10. So Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What means the blind Bartimaeus do? He was humble to acknowledge his need for God unto restoration. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He was humble. He was so much humble to acknowledge that, look, I need God. If I will get to my level of restoration, I need God. You don't need man. Hallelujah. Why do we need to be humble? Our state of humility and willingness to obey will take us to our land of restoration. Because there are some instructions, there are some guidance God will give you. But if you don't take it, your pride will deny you. This man acknowledged the fact that he needed help. So he cried, he was not ashamed. He cried unto Jesus, Thou son of David, have mercy for me. Most of us, our pride will deny us of our blessings. You can listen, probably it will take just an instruction from a small girl. So looking down upon that little girl, you lose your blessing. Let's go to the scriptures for examples. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Little girl, 
and not just a little girl, a slave. A maid. So look at where the solution is coming from. So your pride, if you don't take care, will deny you. Your pride, if you don't take care, will limit you. Probably you may be looking for somebody with cassock, somebody with chains and cross cassia or the comb to come and stand here to declare something before you receive it. Hallelujah. Let's jump to verse 9 to 14. So Naaman came with his horses and with his child. So finally, Naaman heeded to what the wife said. And he went with his people. Continue. And he stood at the door of the house of Elisha. He stood at the door of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him. Now Elisha did not come out to meet this man with all these titles. He never came out. But he sent his servants. <laughs> Look at all the titles that has been given this man. But Elisha never came out to meet him. Hallelujah. He never came out to meet him. He sent the servants. Say, go. I'm giving you some instructions. Go and give it to him. Say, go and wash in Jordan seven times. He told them, go to Jordan and wash seven times. And he be healed. And thou shalt be healed. Continue. But Naaman was wet bread. But this man was wrong. He became angry. He said, 